Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the privilege to be here again. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your spirits. We thank you for your enablement. We thank you for causing us to grow in your, in your grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the people we fellowship together. We thank you because it has always been your presence. So even as we pray again tonight, even as we call upon you tonight, Heavenly Father, we pray and ask that your glory will descend on us in a greater dimension in the name of Jesus. Also, so so we do to see your arm, reveal your arm unto us in the name of Jesus. And every strong man in our lives, every strong man in our situation, in our family, in our ministry, may they bow in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So I want us to begin to appreciate the Lord for giving us this rare privilege again to call upon his name. I want us to thank him because he is good and his mercies endures forever. Just briefly appreciate the Lord. We come into his presence with thanksgiving. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his court praise. Father, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Omnipotent God. Lord, we praise you. Praise the Lord for his mercies and yours forever. Praise him because he has been so merciful to us as individuals, as family. He has been so merciful to us. Thank him for his mercies. Father, we thank you for your mercies. Lord, we thank you for your arm of love. We thank you for your grace upon our life. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the grace to pray always. Thank you for the grace to stand in the dark. Thank you for this grace you have given on to us. The God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for giving us access. He said we have access by the sweet, by the blood. Thank you for access. Thank you for access to the throne. Thank you for access. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, just connect to the Holy Ghost tonight. Connect to the Spirit of the living God. Be in the Spirit. Begin to appreciate the Lord. Oh, great is His faithfulness. He said that it's not because we are, we are, we are half, not because we are mighty, but because God has chosen us. God has looked kindly upon us. What is man? God is mercy. Thank you for causing us to enjoy your grace in this place. We are enjoying your presence. We are enjoying your, your, your grace and your glory. Oh, Holy Spirit, we honor you. We give you praise. Thank you because you have heard us already. Panesta Faradile Mokoshande, Rababa Kapalene Mizetia da Fenecora, Rabakoshene Mendele Costa Namina Kapabiande. Thank you because you have heard us already. Even before we cry, you have heard us. Oh, thank you because you know the thoughts of our hearts, you know our desires. Thank you because you know our desire to see your mighty arm revealed in our life, your mighty arm revealed in our families, your mighty arm revealed in our commission, your mighty arm revealed in our nation, your mighty arm revealed in our situation. Thank you because you know our desire. We want to see your arm. We want your kingdom to descend upon us. We want your power to descend upon our situation. Thank you because you hear us tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you because it is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. It's of God that show it mercy. Thank you for your merciful arm in our life. Thank you because we see your mercy. We encounter your mercy today. Every act of judgment is, a, is an act of mercy. Thank you because of your mercy. We see your mercy tonight. As we cry, as we call, as we call upon heaven, we see your mighty arm of mercy. The Bible said that God slay the, the, the children of Israel or of, of Egypt because his mercies endure forever. He killed the firstborn because his mercies endures forever. Tonight we see your mercy. We see your mercy as you proclaim judgments over the strong men in our families, over the strong men in our life. Oh, paradiko palatama nakaya, bele neko zina maneko shina matali ati, rebe ko zede kapali ande mina kustata, rababa kadele meneko shanama. Just begin to ascend to the throne of God as you worship. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
begin to ascend to the throne of mercy tonight. Oh, brush the fen. Rebecca Palana Masianda Fina Copaliande. Menene Kosha da Bizone Mene Capandi. Rakosa da Vila Comianda Fenestafa. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I appreciate God for the testimonies in our life, for the testimonies as a result of prayers. No, no, shed the copa, titana macapalianda, emene cobali gadava shana manana matalaya, lebi cozen emene capara di la cosana mana. Holy Spirit, thank you for your mercy, thank you for the testimonies, thank you for the previous victories. A paro shada capa, a paro no moco zada bila kaya, menene cozite teliando shinama, bali coste fiandara, mmm, no shed me calenda la. Thank you for the great deliverances you have wrought in our life in past times. Thank you. We are not ungrateful. We don't just come and bombage the heavens without appreciating God. Appreciate Him because of that. Make a pala to balakaya de la misiana fena. Rebe coco pala tayamana kushinama. A panoso. Do bele kene matele mika baro de zed kapala kaya dalamina leno no shada biko zene matela oh thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit in Jesus name we have prayed amen tonight we will be considering and we will continue from the last meeting we talked about we prayed and we addressed the strong man and tonight the same thing God will do again. God will help us here tonight. The Holy Spirit will enable us. We move under the leadership of the Spirit of God. I want to read from the book of from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. And we'll just read briefly. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. When we are combating the strong man, we must have an understanding that it's not just a man, it's a strong man. It's a strong man. It's true that the devil has been defeated. But don't forget that the devil is still the anointed cherub that covers. Don't forget that the devil was the anointed cherub that covered. And that anointing he still had he still has power. He still has power. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Our, our wrestle is not with mortal men. It's not with ordinary men, you know? So when we say combating the strong man, we are not just combating, we are not fighting against physical people, even though they are cooperating with the spirit behind them. We are not fighting these physical men. Even though they are in alignment with the devil, we are not fighting them. But then, when God pronounces judgment upon that devil, upon that kingdom, they also, they will be judged. They also will be judged. And so that is it. That is it. When God pronounces judgment, judgment upon the gods of, of, of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also was judged. When God pronounced judgment upon them, all the gods in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh died. Pharaoh died also. Because why? He was in alignment. Tonight, as we are praying, oh, God will be manifesting judgment. The angels of the Lord will be carrying out their judgments upon those kingdoms, upon those, those, those strong men in our family, in our life, in our ministry that do not want us to see the glory of God, that do not want us to see the arm of God. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the law and in the power of his mind. So we must understand that the strong man is a strong man. He's strong, he's strong. He said, But be strong in the law and in the power of his mind. Why? In our own, in our own might, we can't do it. In our own might, we can't come upon we, we, we can't we can't enforce that judgment on the strong man. But in the might of the law, in the strength of the law, oh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, no power can stand the power of the Holy Spirit. No king can stand the power of the Holy Spirit. No territory, no power, no principality, no strong man, no strange demon, no ancestral spirits, no territorial demon can stand the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that is the power wherein we must be, we must lay our foundation. That is the power wherein we must carry. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You want to stand against powers who have been there for years, even before you were born. You want to contend against powers who have been there, who have, who have their thrones in your family, even before your great grandfather was born. Then you must be strong in the ancient of days. You must be strong in the one who has wisdom, who has understanding, who has might more than any power, more than any principality on it. And so, it is God that is our strength. We must be strong in him. Otherwise, many men have, have strived. Why do you think? Why do we think? In, in families, we see battles. We see nobody rising. We see struggles and struggles here and there. Why do you think that people who have been there for years, many years, they've tried to rise. They did not rise. It's because they probably they depended on their strength. Probably they felt they could do it by 
exercise their power. They did not understand the battle. And so God is telling us tonight that we must be strong in the Lord because it's a battle. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. He said, if a, if a strong man armed keep at his palace, his good side peace. But when a stronger one comes upon him, it's a process. It's a battle. So that strong man must have to have to bow. In the land of Egypt, it was a process. God had to take them through. God had to take Pharaoh through a process. And all the gods, one by one, God began to judge them. Because why? It's a process. The man, the armors must be dismantled. It's a process. And finally, that strong man must bow. So God said, be strong in the Lord. So do you want to fight the strong man and not face resistance and not face opposition? No, you, you, you will face oppositions. You will face attacks, but be strong in the Lord. When do you, when you want to see your victory, you must be strong in the Lord. Because why? You say, oh, this victory is not coming. I've been praying. I've been crying. I've been agonizing. It's not coming. No, God is at work, but you must be strong in the Lord. Attacks will come. You must be strong in the Lord. And this is a chapter to us tonight as prayer. He said, be strong in the Lord. And tonight we'll be praying. We'll be praying. We'll help us. God will enable us. God will enable us to pray son in God. God will enable us to grow in might. God will enable us to put on all the armors of God. God will help us to understand this battle and to press on in his strength and to enter into his strength. There is an entering into the strength of God. There is an entering. There is, there is a process where you grow in God to the point that those powers will have to submit. Those powers will try and fail. They will have to submit. I want us to pray and say, Father, help me know your might. Help me come into a dimension of your mind tonight. Help me come into a dimension of your might tonight. Help me come into a dimension of your might tonight. Help me come into a dimension of your might tonight. O Maroka Paleka di Zenema Copariandi Meneko Shadabila Catalambi and the Feneco. Oh, Spirit of God, help us. Can you pray? Whenever you are begin to pray, Father, help me come into a dimension of your might tonight. Emene Capalico Bala Capale Nemaca. Emene Cobala Cashada Bica Telemica Taya. Minoco so Teteli and the Fina Capara. Meniko Zadalia, Tananiko Pashinamara, Ebeneko Zedebicataliande, Miko Palaco Shede Bele Casianda Fenata, Meni Luzuko Palacaya de Lemeneco Shinamara, help me come into a dimension of your mind. Be strong in the Lord, not in philosophy, not in theology. Be strong in the Lord, in a matela, Capaya de la Cochina. Holy Ghost, bring me into a dimension of your mind tonight. Mekoze de le bakaya de le bizianta. Meridu kuze de koshina mataliandi. Meridi kupalianda zo de kapala na mashina. Esto fika para de le kianda fina stafa. Minuze de le kapande le moshina ma. Meni likuze de be katalaya. Meni likuzudu bakapala na mantela. Ebrenis to fiana ka. Ebrenis to fiana kapaliando shana. Are you praying? And sure you are praying. And sure you are praying wherever you are. In Jesus' name. Then we pray. Amen. Well, you, you will understand that David had to go through a lot. David was, was fighting, against, was contending against a power, a power that does not want him to be enthroned. It was not just Saul. There was a power behind Saul. And say, the, the power did not even start with Saul. The power started, you know, when he had, look, we, we, are, we are fighting against a devil who knows, who, who, has, who has a faint idea, who has a little glimpse of, of what God wants to do in our life. He, 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 he perceived that something want to break forth out of our life. I said, this one, this one wants to resist. And so De David was fighting against, was wrestling against a power that does not want him to rise. It took a long time. It took a long time. And in that process, God began to bring him into an understanding of his mind. God began to reveal in my, his mighty arm to David. And that was why David was able to, to subdue that power. That was why that kingdom, that power bowed. Because why? David began to understand the might of God. David began to wait on God. David began to seek, seek the face of God. He said, early will I seek the my soul test for thee. My, my flesh long for thee in a dry and testy land where there is no water to see thy power and thy glory. Except God ushers us into a dimension of might. We might never understand the battles. We, we, we might never understand the battles against the strong man. You see, we are going to pray that God usher me into a dimension of might tonight. In this meeting tonight, usher me into a dimension. He said, be strong in the Lord. Father, bring me into strength in you. Oh, Barodo Kopala, cause something to descend upon me tonight. Cause Cause something to descend upon my 
my life tonight. Cause your might to descend upon my life tonight. Ever do ko pa dala kapaya dala mina kosa berete ko shina mara. Bring me into an understanding of your might. Bring me no man na niko pe ya tala mina nakashata. Abale ko bianda pray the way you know to pray it. Ika pa no se de bele kaya mano se de biko tala ya minu dunu muko pali ande fina kapa dala ko shina ma. Ever ni nunu se de bele kapa la na matela mianda. Bale ko shada biko zene mene kapa. Aba nunu si da ba kapa la na mari. Ebi isto fianda kapa la ne mene. Minu kupu katala mianda kopali anda zona. Ede ko shane mene kapa la. Libra no zi ko tete le mi kataya. Ebe ni sudu kopa tatala mi ya kapaya. Mini ne kopele ne mene kapa. Mini ne kopele ne makapaya. Mini nu kapele ne matala kaya. Ese Daniel, thou art greatly beloved. Thou art greatly beloved. I'm sent. I'm sent unto thee to give this key, to give the understanding. You know, Daniel had to possess those things because if he didn't understand, if God had not given him understanding as key, he would not understand what was happening in the realm of the spirit. He will not understand that there was a battle against that principality. He will not understand there is a dimension of the might of God that God will bring you into, and then you will begin to understand that there are contentions in your family. You will begin to understand when God begins to show you some dimensions of power. You will begin to understand that there are battles, that there are foundational problems that you must address. You will begin to understand the dynamics. He said, when the kingdom, when a greater kingdom, when a greater one comes upon that man, he said, the strong man is subdued. The strong man bows out. We're going to pray and say, God, bring me into an understanding of your mind tonight. And, oh, usher me into a new dimension, a strange dimension of your power tonight. Eminu sete kapaliani, erokopo Oh, we have limited time. Just pray, 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 pray. Pray that tonight God will open the door, the floodgate of heaven into your soul. God will activate your spirit, man. God will deposit in you might. God will bring you and God will begin to teach you how to be strong in him tonight. At the end of this meeting, there will be a dynamic of might, there will be a dimension of power. Oh, Rakapaliande, there will be an illumination that has entered into your soul. There will be an illumination that the Spirit of God has downloaded into your soul. Father, tonight as I pray, oh, Mare de Kapa, Dilis Tufa, in the Nekosha de Bele Catalamiande, Rebe Kapaliande, you will prepare me, you will chisel in me, you will place in me a dimension of your might in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Maro Kashada, be strong in the Lord. At the end of this meeting, God, you will open my understanding on how to become strong in the Lord, on how to grow in the power of your might. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, I want to call on Brother Johanny to continue with the meeting. Yes, glory to Lord. I will read the scripture from Numbers chapter 22 and verses 4 to 7, which says, And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, and unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Tippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Er to Ethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the earth of the earth, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. Their adventure. I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hands. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Allah. Yes, probably we all know the story better, at least some about it. And here, a person, a king, a strong man of a country, of an area, was calling even the people of try to 
get the people of God cursed, try to bring, bring stumbling block upon the people of God by using some person who was in rel- some kind of relationship with God. So, uh, so old prophets. So it is possible that in our lives also, that there is our areas, our situations, our people who know, but even in our countries, that some people who have no God, who have been in contact with him, or but a strong man, the devil is really wicked. It is possible that he can ooze and try to draw those people, make us go astray, make bring any kind of stumbling block that we might stumble upon. Because later we read, as Jesus was telling Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, about that about Balaam next, which says that a be part of the, uh, they that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. And of this case, we read at chapter 20, uh, 25 of Numbers. So even though God blessed through Balaam the people, he still, the Balaam still drew the offerings, drew the money that Balak wanted to give him. Still Balaam went and gave the enemy, the strong man, way to affect the people of God. So so will the enemy do to stay. But what is our position? What must I do? Because every enemy tries so many ways to bring stumbling blocks. It, is, it can be through our family. It can be through our friends. It can be through even our church, even our uh, on other on believers and, and is in this case we see the person who was in some kind of relationship with God bring a stumbling block to God's people so we are not looking at people we are not looking at things of this world but we must set our face as like a flint towards God's will just like Jesus when in chapter Luke, 9 chapter of Luke 51, he set his flake steadfastly upon Jerusalem. We set our face not upon man, not upon things of this world, but upon God's purposes, upon God, steadfastly to him. We are not looking on things of here, not looking on the people, because then we can fall. But we set our face toward God, we set our face toward his purposes, and we will look upon them. So our first prayer point, as the Spirit leads us, is that when the enemy tries to make us to stumble, is it clever? Is it a subtle way? We subtly, we will, we will have this. We notice, we see, and we discern what this is because we are only looking at the way of God. We are steadfastly setting ourselves to the Lord's way. So let us pray that we, our face is set there steadfastly like a flint to God's will, to God's purposes, so that we won't get deceived in any way the enemy tries to move us, try to make us a stump. So Lord, I could do this prayer request. We read from your word that the stumbling was set, was set before the spirit, before because of the spirit was going behind and because of the people that way, where done, where did the sin against you? So we pray, Lord, that your by your spirit, by your power, by your grace working through us, we set our face like a flint toward Jerusalem, steadfastly toward Jerusalem, steadfast to your to your purposes, that we won't be have going down in any ways because you are able to keep us standing. Because instead of looking of these early things, instead of looking at this man, we set the Lord always before. For our face. He is at my right. I, sh- I shall not fall because of you, Lord. That is what we decree because your word says so. Lord, this is our prayer. Our face is toward you. We will not fall because our ways, we set you always, every time, every season, out of season and in of season, before our face. And because you are before our face, we will not fall because you are able to keep us standing. <laughs> And because the enemy can try to do, enemy can try to do different things to make us to stumble. There can be stumbling as well. There can be some things we have stumbled before. But the law is powerful. The rest of time, the law is powerful to raise in those areas, those situations. When even years ago, when even five.
five years ago, ago, maybe even ten years ago, we are stumbled uh-huh. and those things still are affecting our life. Lord is able to restore even through those things. When we humble ourselves, when we come to him which we us, because a broken heart and contrary spirit, he can doesn't exist. So we come humbly before you, Lord, that you, even those all things that can still affect our life, those all stumbling, you are forgiving God and you always love us. You always are good. You want to restore us as raise us up. So, Lord, we come before you humbly. Restore all those all things even that the, your power is not manifesting because of them even today restore those things he said that we come even late to faith come late to know you more and more perfect and push to the spiritual matters later lord you are able even to restore speed like elijah run before the chariots lord we pray your restoration on the things that lost the strong man has done even in the past and when it's done now we pray that now things will be restored. We will run like Elijah run by your power of the Spirit. Lord, that we pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. It is possible the enemy, yes, the enemy is strong. The enemy is strong, man. There's some wicked spirit, a big spiritual ruler who is in the, like in the situation of like in the situation of uh, man, madman of Gadara, when Jesus was even going to that region, on the lake there came a furious storm trying to stop him. And when Jesus went to the shore, right away the madman came. The spirit should know that Jesus has arrived. So even before we are entering those stages of our lives, where God is doing mighty, mighty salvation, bringing forth mighty salvation, mighty healing, mighty deliverances. The enemy knows it, knows that something is being stirred in the spirit, something is happening, something is moving, and he is putting the most furious storm, the strong man is putting before us the most furious storms when we are going there. Because the enemy knows that now something is going to happen. Like the madman was released when the strong man from the madman was cast out because the legion was speaking in behalf of the, of the legion of the spirits when that spirit and the whole of legion because of it was cast away the madman was in uh, such a calm in his right mind and clothes and then after that the madman went and preached the gospel to decapolis in the huge area so that was enemy knew that this man there's a destiny some kind of destiny with this man so that was most seriously bound that the god's purpose in that man couldn't be happening so when we see people with unnatural eyes and well this man man cannot never come to faith this man cannot never it's his soul deep in sin or something if we think in that way no we must change our thinking we don't see with the eyes of man we see with we see with the eyes of faith oh this means man is blind. the lord can use this man as mighty testimony even this man is the apple of his I, I must go to preach the gospel, bring the power, the light, the kingdom of God to this man's situation, because this man, I see through his eyes of faith, this man is the apple of God's eye, he God who loves this man, he wants this man, so let's us pray that we will orient our life, even as, as our eyes is sent like a flint towards Jerusalem, towards God's purpose, we, God is, we have set God, our Lord, before our face always, now we set our face to see the people enemy is using and biding strong man is using and biding is it a uh, close people does or whatever place it is is it the place we preach the gospel they kept comes people who devil has bound like the madman if gather and when we try go there those places with the light because we are the light of this world the enemy says this light is coming but now oh, we don't look through the natural eyes but we must look through the eyes of the spirit to see that what we need to do who is the madman of gather who needs to be released because God's purpose is going to be revealed through that. So let's pray according to this that we will see through the eyes of faith where the enemy is strong and where the enemy's power is manifesting and where God was to release and cast out the strong. So Lord, we pray at this moment and to you that you, by your grace and by your spirit, you open the eyes of our heart. You give us the grace to see through the eyes of faith the people close to us, the people who are oppressed by the devil, and that we may, by your power, by your spirit, cast out the strong man, see the strong man in those situations, and we will speak to the strong man and command that strong man to leave 
those situations, those people's life, that they made me mighty testimony in your life. Lord, we take our stand and authority in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We have all the power because we are submitted under the greatest order there is. And only when we are submitted under the greatest order, where then we are strong. And then in that power, we go, we resist the devil, we cast the devil out, and he will free before us. So, Lord, we will go and look through the eyes of faith, into the darkness, into the situation. We are not scared of the darkness, but we will walk through the power of the Spirit, because I am full of power because of the Spirit of God. And we will go as the light of this world, shine the light even to the darkest situations, shine the light as the city in top of the mountain, top of the hill, and we will go to the black situation, and we will shine the light of God in those places, and through the power of God, even the people, even there will be ten madmen of God, the people will be released in the name of Jesus, because through the power of the Spirit, the devils will go out, the devils will flee, and the gospel will be there for. The word of God will spread, and the word of God will increase in number, in multitude of the people spreading its word. Lord, your power is able, and we commit out and give ourselves to your work more perfectly and more, more that your power may take hold of us and bring us forth, even to the darkest places, even to the place where the people look so much uh, spelling in sin. But no, we looked them through the eyes of faith. We looked them through the eyes of love. We love those people. We will be there. We would be indulging in sin if you wouldn't have saved us. So, Lord, we ask to send us to the places, send us to the broken hearted, send us to the doors of disease, send us to those who are oppressed, because you have saved us, you have delivered us, and you will through us deliver them. You will through us save them, and through you, us, you will heal them, Lord. It's not the power that is in them, it's the power that is within us, the one who is in us greater. We will not look upon the man of this world, the ordinary man, and their power within them. We will look upon and keep our face set actively to the power within us, the great one who is within us, so that through that power you will release them people from the enemy's oppression, because you have died for these people. The precious part of Jesus Christ has been shed for these people. They have been delivered. They, everything has been paid for them. So we will go by the power of the Spirit to declare and to decree their liberty in the name of Jesus Christ, because you have done and won the victory at the cross once and for all. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Now, when we call to preach the gospel, when we do it, it is, Lord is calling us to re recommit in that way that we might have been preaching the gospel sometime before. We might have been even preaching the gospel now regularly. The Lord is come calling us again. I want you to go and lay before me. You know the spirit is mystery. You have been growing even in this connection with brethren every Saturday, every another Saturday. But I want you to go forward. I didn't call you just to getting strengthened, just to fellowship with me. I want you to go forward to bring that light into the world. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Bring the goodness you know. These mysteries, your work true. To free the people, to deliver the people, to heal the people to my name. I am with you and I am sending you. So brethren, I let us commit ourselves more to his work. Let us be everywhere we go, ready to hear him. First hand hearing and listening from our Lord that we will go then do his will wherever we are. And wherever we are, let us see the people as the apples, like we are in great apple garden. The people are the apples of his eye. And we are going that, Lord, I want that these apples you so desire. I just, I would, as you shake the trees, as you move in their lives, as you bring the power of the gospel to their lives, that I would just catch when they drop oh, those people who are so loud to you. 
So let us be ready every day to preach the gospel, do the work of the evangelist, because the harvest is ready, the harvest is ripe, and, and the God is God is exhorting us, go, I am with you, you are anointed, you are my beloved, bring the gospel to people, you have the power within you, you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have everything you need to go forward, go forward, my children, you you are powerful, you are anointed, you must go and I am with you. It's not that you need to feel the power before you go. Go and you will feel the power. Go and you will see the anointing. Go and you will increase in the anointing, in the power, in the giftings. And so, Lord, we answer with one heart to your call. We will go, as the gospel say, go into all the world. Lord, we answer you calling. We will go. We will preach the gospel. We will be ready in season and out of season. We will do the work of evangelists. It's not just those who are called to the last ministry, full time ministry. It's for every child of God to preach the gospel. The harvest is plentiful. So, Lord, we take the, the thing that we are going at the farm, that the ox is going before us. And, Lord, we are plowing and we are sowing the seed everywhere, every day, and just throwing the seed, not the pinpointing that maybe here seed, maybe see it there. No, we are solving plenty of everywhere. By the Spirit of God, by the power you have given us, Lord, we will sow. And when the enemy comes forward, with the sickness, when the diseases, with the devils, and with the strong man, even people, unproxy people, we will test the now in the name of Jesus. We are not afraid because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation of everyone who believes. And in Jesus Christ's name, we answer you call our Lord. We go. We are ready to go. Take us where you want. We preach the gospel and grow us there. In we thank you that you have given us power. You we thank you that you have given us ready heart to go. You have made us ready laborers to your work for the harvest that is plenteous, that is ready, that is ripened. So we will go and we will start not just to sow away around. We will start to reap the mighty harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. So I want to call on Pastor Andrew. Yes. Sako, can you help us read? We continue from the prayer that Yohani has just helped us lead. From Numbers 22, we are combating the strong man and the Holy Spirit to help us to face the strong man wherever department he has chosen to hide himself. Numbers 22, I think Ioanni Epos read, read 4 to 6 or 4 to 7. We will read 6 and 7 and let's see how the Lord leads us from there. It, Numbers 22, 6 and 7. Come now, therefore I pray to curse me his people, for they are too mighty for me. Pray we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. Thank you very much. If time permits, we may read other verses in this chapter. I want us to put our attention on certain things. We know this story. It was the story of Balaam and Balak. Balak was the king of Moab. And for whatsoever reason, he simply forgot that he is the cousin of the Israelites. Because the Moabites and the Ammonites were the children of Lot. They slept with their father and they gave birth to these two tribes. And Lot is the brother of Abraham. And so there is a connection familiarly between Moab and Israel. But time has passed. Generations have come and gone. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Lot and his descendants have died. And now here comes the Moabites. They, they, they are now a mighty city or a mighty country all by themselves. And the king of Moab suddenly realized that there is an atrocity to commit at this time, simply because Israel was going on their own journey. In fact, prior to this time, if we read the story, we will realize that Israel wanted to pass through their land, but they refused. And so Israel said, we will not fight. You are our brother. So we'll go pass somewhere else. Even at that, Moab was not comfortable. Let's pay particular attention to verse 6. The Bible says, Balaam or Balak said to his 
counselors, to his senators, to his house of representative, house of parliament, to his executive and judiciary, and to his law enforcement agent. I'm trying to simulate it to our current situation. These are the terms that we are used to. He said, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me these people, for they are too mighty for me. Does that not strike us that Balak already has an understanding of the might of the Israelites without testing them in a fight? I say it again. Balak already has an understanding of the might of the Israelites without contending with them or combating with them in a fight. Do you recognize that you are representing the Israel of God? You are an Israel of God. That's how the Bible describes us in the book of Galatians. We of the seed of Abraham by faith. We have been connected. Yes, we were sometimes far off, away from the commonwealth of Israel, but we have been grafted in. These are the principles in scriptures that God looks at us as an extended Jewish community spiritually. As a result of that, not for doing anything else, just simply because you have given your life to Jesus. Do you know that certain Balak have identified that you belong to the community of might? And that alone is a provocation to Balak to organize a committee to sponsor our destruction. I pray the Holy Ghost will give us understanding. But God wants to open our eyes to certain things so that we know how to pray. And so here, Balak invited a diviner to come carry out a certain assignment and look at the reason for that obligation is this. For they are too mighty. He used the terminology too mighty. Do you know that the devil identifies your might, but only you seems to look down upon yourself? You are the only one that looks upon yourself, look down upon yourself. And you feel like, oh, I am not capable of this. I am insufficient. I am not enough. I need something else. Who told you that? The Bible says, greater is he that lives within you than he that be with them. For whosoever reason, the astrologers have yet to have told Bela that there is a potential, that dynamic uh, power in the lives of these people that we can describe as too mighty. Do you know that the man of might lives with you, within you? His name is the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord. He didn't say God is going to make you strong in the Lord. That is, that is, he, he says, activate your potential. And in the power of his might, that's what Brother Imaz just read for us. If we are not able to be strong in the Lord, it's just like we cannot command a battery to charge itself. It doesn't have the capacity to do so. Somebody has to charge a battery. But there are, for, for God to give us an instruction, it's an indication that we are capable of doing it. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So when the mighty one dwells within us, automatically you are mighty. And because you are mighty, you are a candidate to pull down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. He didn't say ask for angelic help. If we understand this principle, we will understand that there are certain prayers we are privileged to pray and it will have an answer. And so here, Balak recognized the might of the Israelites. And I can tell you, these same Israelites were the ones that did not even enter the promised land. They were wasted in the wilderness. They looked down upon themselves. They didn't know that that their enemy has sized them up as too mighty, but they were acting out a beggarly element lifestyle, provoking God because of their own belief. They didn't know that right within them, there was tremendous power that could shake an entire nation and bring them crushing down upon their knees without a combat. I perceive that somebody here is just like that. The battalions of angels are working with you, but yet you are demoralized, you are discouraged because somebody said a negative thing at you. What kind of, my friend, get off? Because you are too mighty for the Belak that is trying to harass you. Tonight, we are going to address the Belak, but God just tried to give us certain understanding. The Bible says, look at the systematic approach for Belak destructive enterprise. For they are too mighty for me, per adventure I shall prevail. So it's negotiating for the defeat of a people who have not combated him or who don't even have an idea or a thought pattern to fight him. Do you understand? Don't have a foolish thought that because you are nice, you don't want anybody's trouble, nobody will want your trouble. That is a foolish thinking. Israel was not looking for Moab's trouble. They understood that these are our extended family members. But extended family members 
members is, was busy seeking for the defeat and the downtroddenness and the devastation of another family member. If we live in ignorance, we perish. My people perish. He, he didn't say God's, God's enemy. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Before we pray, we need to have this certain understanding. Here, Balaam, an extended family member, desires to provoke another family member and to put a stumbling block. Yohani has just read that to us. To put a stumbling block, to limit their progress, to deter them, to distract them, and to turn them backward. To cancel away the entire progress that they have ever made. To decimate their progress. Is there a family member like that? Looking at you from a vantage position. With the, bi with the spiritual binoculars of evil. And murderous intent. Well, I don't know why I'm saying what I am saying. But let's follow. The Holy Ghost is speaking to us. Is there someone so close but so far? Who has an indication and an understanding of the power and the might that dwells within you? The unfortunate thing is that you, you are the only one that does not know the capacity that lies within you. Hence, you lie down, discouraged, tired, looking so depressed as if there is no hope. But greater is he that lives within you than him that lives with him. This man called Belak was a systematic, diabolical, and crafty personality. And he was also persevering. We know the story. Even when the so-called false prophet refused because God was dealing with him in his own way, Balak continued to persist. Enemies don't give up, but we, we like giving up after one or two prayer requests. We like, we will pray this prayer again in two weeks' time until we come out with a definitive answer to the cry of our heart. Balak, verse 6 of Numbers 22 says, For they are too mighty for me. Paraventure, I shall prevail. He says, when we prevail, what's the next thing? That we may smite them. Can you imagine that people who are not looking for your trouble, you are looking for their death. This is pure life, real life scenario. Nothing has changed. New news is simply old news happening to new people. Of course, Balak couldn't have lived for 3,000 years. That is why he's not here today. But what the atrocities he was committing, the way he was programming his entire city and nation to the devastation of somebody else, is that not what is going on in our present world? Nothing has changed. New news is simply old news happening to new people. People. He said that paraventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, that we may drive them out of the land, not of his own land. Israel had not invaded his land. He said the land, understand that, the land, can you imagine? <laughs> Satan raised up Bela to intercept the journey of Israel to their Canaan land. Do you also know that you have the land? You have a possession. It could be a ministry. It could be a family. It could be a career. It could be your health. It could be your finance. You also have the land. You also have the land. It may not be material earth that you have to step, step, step upon. It may simply be a house. It may be a car. It may be your child. Something can represent you your the land. But then there are certain Balak that say, no, 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 no. In as much as you have this one and have this and that and have this and have this, ah, it means that you are too mighty for me. You, you have to be decimated to lose all these things. And you realize that suddenly you slept last night in peace and you woke up in trouble this morning. Maybe you are in this condition. When men slept, the enemy came and so tears and went his way. Maybe certain Balak have been carrying out a conversation friends over you and you are not oblivious to the fact that this is going on. While all these things were going on, in the land of Moab, Israel was sleeping and waking up as if there is no trouble. That is the difference between that generation and this one. Why? The Holy Ghost was not living in them, so they didn't have advanced knowledge. What the Spirit of God is speaking to us today, either we came here by circumstance or not, I don't know, but this is simply advanced knowledge. Certain Balak somewhere, certain Balak somewhere are busy negoti negotiating for our the land. They are negotiating for our prosperity, our health, our peace, our progress, our expansion, our ability to evangelize and win souls. Certain Balak are instituting and configuring and programming and prognosticating fear into our heart. Projections. 
They see it on their sofa, in their hiding place, in the places of darkness, and they are imagining evil. And suddenly, you, it's as if an arrow has just hit you. It's as if something just brushed your face, and a sudden cloud just falls upon you, and suddenly you are immobilized. Well, again, I say, I don't know why I'm saying this thing, but the Holy Ghost is revealing somebody's identity. I don't know who the person is. But let's just follow. He says that we may smite them, that I that I may drive them out of the land. So is somebody struggling with you for your own possession, which is the land? Is it a sickness that is trying to rob you of your own health, which is your the land, or your own child, or your own parent, or whatsoever? Something is trying to rob you of the land. And when you look at it in insight, you can trace it back to a provocation by certain Balak provoking you over your the land, in quotation mark. Look at Balak, who was a perfect strategist. Do you know he was appealing to the energies in Balaam? He was appealing to the spiritual authority of wickedness in the spirit of Balaam. And you don't understand these things. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against rulers of darkness. Look at how Balak, Balak was choosing his words, the words he was saying to Balaam. He said, for I know, do you know that this is the, on the that this is negative anyway, but on the positive side, do you know this is how to pray? If you want to appeal to the God of heaven, you need to declare what you know about him. See, we need to learn the right way by looking at how Satan does on certain things. Balak was appealing to the demonic unction, the negative anointing, that brutal ability to place a curse on someone. He was appealing to that thing. It is impossible for Balaam to hear such thing and the anointing of evil does not come upon him. See, as soon as Balaam received that invitation, received this information, he got up, he saddled his ass and he began to travel. I tell you the truth. A generator of anointing fell upon him. A man understood how to pull the trigger. Are you here? You don't know how to pray? Go and learn from Balak. You will understand how to get God do things for you. And that is why you need to know certain things. Here, Balak is saying, for I watch that he whom thou blessed is blessed. And he whom thou cursed is cursed. Look at something. Balak didn't say, come and buy me more AK-47 or ballistic missile so I can kill these people. He said, no, I have my soldiers already, the sword and the spear, the shield, and all the weapons of war at that time. It's so available, but I cannot go into this battlefield because these people are too mighty. Do you know that the people of Israel did not have weapons to fight? Do you know that when eventually they got to Canaan, they had to go and borrow sword. They had to go and fight their sword to fight even in the land of the Philistines. They only had plates and spoons to collect manna. Come to think of people who only have plates and spoons were described as too mighty and yet a man with soldiers and artillery and battalion is afraid to contend with somebody who has plate and spoon. So do you now realize where the Bible says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood? The people of the other world, the people of the demonic world, they understand the intricacies of spiritual dynamo and dynamics. We, we just live anyhow. We talk carelessly. We go carelessly to places. We don't consider certain blueprints. We expose ourselves as if the only thing available is this sun and this moon and the ground and the rain and the... No, 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 no. Life is beyond what we can see. It's beyond this element. Or it is written that the things that appear are made out of things that do not appear. We have to enter into a dimension where our spiritual antenna is more real than this physical world. We have to be walking spirits. It is at that particular level that we can alter dynamics in life. Otherwise, we will just be scavengers here. Looking for crumbs that are falling from the master's table. And anything and anybody can drop evil load at our footstep and we have to carry it. But if you want to walk in victory. Unfortunately, the people of Israel, there was no prayer warrior there. They didn't 
didn't have a, a global prayer combat. They were sleeping and waking up and packing manner with spoons. They did not know that certain Balak was busy negotiating for their devastation and destruction, trying to seize and intercept their land. Marus Kavala Sutani Mataya. For so, as it was in those days, so it is today and it will continue to be tomorrow. As the Holy Ghost is saying, who oh, that men will listen and I cannot hear, but the truth will set us free. I don't know who that is meant for. Well, it's Balak understood that to go with my artillery armament and spiritual and physical sorry and, and physical element of warfare attack and defense system it to be rendered impotent by the spoons and the blades of these men and women and children who have been trekking from egypt who are weary of even the journey in the wilderness i can't try to fight them as they are they are too mighty for me. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? A family with only blade and spoon is mightier than a man with soldiers and weapons. I say it again. Come into your place. Enter into your office. Rise out of your obscurity and enter into limelight. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Wake up. You are not just a non-entity. You are not just here for the passage of time as part of those that came into this world. But you are to register marks of invincibility of the great God that lives within you. Right on earth until you marshal into heaven as a mighty gladiator of Zion. And so Balak was speaking and he says, look, I can never undertake this battle of devastation until you find a way to curse me, these people. How is it that curse will reduce the might of the Israelites? Hmm. And if Balaam is able to do so, then this man will roll out his, just open the floodgate of his barrack and tell his soldiers, now you can go and destroy them. And it will actually work. We know the story. As this man was appealing to the negative anointing in Balaam, by these utterances, <laughs> he was extolling him. He was praising his spiritual capability. And let me tell you, that thing is dangerous. You don't understand certain things. When you see certain women that need certain things from certain herbalists, they know what to say. They go to the herbalist, they lie down on the floor, they kneel down, and they begin to praise the demonic giant in the herbalist. I say, sir, you did it yesterday, you will do it today and you will do it tomorrow. And they begin to praise. And you will see that man, something will begin to bubble inside of him. And he asks the woman, what do you want? The woman will say, I want to kill this person. Before you know what's happening, that person is there. Provoking a negative anointing. In the positive side, we need to provoke the Holy Ghost. We have to come to the point where we can say, for I know. For I know. For I know. I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able. Do you know Apostle said that? He said, there stood by me last night. An angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. Can you say that? <laughs> And while men were afraid of their life because of the jeopardy of that journey, because that journey, that voyage was dangerous, and the ship was almost broken apart, and they are throwing everything they had into the waters. They were losing finance, losing property, and the Bible says all hope of life appeared to be fading away into, in, in, into thin air. A man that was a prisoner with physical chains on his hands, named Apostle Paul, uttered such kind of statement from eternity into time, and commanded men who have been fasting, forced fasting, as a result of death staring them in the face, to eat and give them a charge. There shall not be any loss of life for the sheep. How did he arrive at that? But that's what we are practicing here. Back to this story. And the Bible says, and the elders of Moab. That's what I said. The law enforcement agents, the parliamentarians, the justice system, the senators, the executive, the ministers. I'm using this term we are used to it. The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see how they provoke Balaam to action by all means? Not only that Balaam could not reject the praise, he was because he was won aggressively by God. He, for whatsoever reason, renounced the praise. But he 
you. I had, he had already activated that evil anointing. He renounced the praise, but because of the fear of God, he had to suspend that. But when money was given to him, when riches was told as part of the package, ah, he said, well, who is that God, self? If, 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 if he wants to kill me, let me kill, let him kill me. I will not cause them, but I will give them a sub to advise. Hmm. Adam wreaked havoc on Israel. Tonight, we can't finish this tonight, but we will we'll pray with what we have heard so far. Addressing the strong man. Addressing the strong man. Addressing the strong man. Combating the strong man. I want you to begin to pray now with this level of understanding. And begin to, first of all, I want you to thank God because you know, you now know who you are. Let's start from there. Let's begin to worship God and say, Father, I give you praise because you live inside of me. I now know that I'm not supposed to look down upon myself because greater is he that lives within me. I don't just want to be told by my enemy that I am full of might. I want to recognize that by myself. Lift up your voice and pray. We're going to progress from here. Begin to worship God because he has imparted inside of you a great, mighty, potent, everlasting, undeniable potential. You can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for help. You have a direct access to the creator of the heavens and earth, the maker of the mountains, the seas, and the eyes. You have to post Kali Eribeskatilavia straight direct access to the possibilities that lies in glory and to transfer the reality of eternity into time. Let them begin to worship God because greatness lies within you. Begin to lift your voice and praise Him and say, Lord, now for I know so. For I know I am being redeemed by the blood. For I know I am born again. For I know that my name is written in glory. See, give God that level of understanding and appreciation and adoration. I don't want to be ungrateful. I don't want to be an ungrateful servant. For I know things and things and things have been done for me. For I know you anointed me at so, 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 and so time, at so, so, and so day, at so, and so period, at so, and so season. For I know worship God because of what you have known. The enemy not to know much more than you should know. For I know, for I know, for I know. Paul the apostle said, I am an apostle of the Gentiles, and I magnify my office. <laughs> what do you know about yourself? Are you a failure? Is that what you know? <laughs> what a shame. Are you an embarrassment to grace? Is that what you know? Are you falling and rising every time? Is that what you know? Are you always a victim of circumstances? Is that what you know about yourself? My friend, you have to change your binoculars. <laughs> You've got to change your spectacle. Now begin to tell the things that you know. Because do you know that God knows things about you? Say, for I know the thought I think towards you. It is only you that do not know. But God knows. God knows. Begin to worship God and say, now I know my identity in Christ. Begin to worship God and say, now I know I am a new creature. All things are passing away. Behold, I am become new. Begin to know, begin to recognize because you are not, you are not a scavenger. <laughs> he knows how to raise your beggars from the donkey to sit with princes. You don't understand. <laughs> when men say there is a casting down, what should you say? There is a lifting up. How much of these things do you know? <laughs> how much of this reality do you walk in? How often do you proclaim your liberty in Christ, your victory, your dimensionless might in Christ? How come the enemy knows you more than you know yourself? And you continue to whine in spiritual emptiness and laxity and shame as a result of your misdiagnosis of who you are. Ah, friend, 
Declare what you know about yourself before the Almighty God. For where two or three are gathered is there in their midst, you are declaring what you know about yourself before the holy angels. This is how to provoke the might of the Almighty. This is how to be strong in the Lord. Make a declaration of what you know. I am born again. Thank you because I know that I am more than conqueror. I am more than overcomer. Because I know that you have made me. You have. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because I know I am teachable. I know that when you walk in power, like a power, the spirit of God will lift up His standard over you. Thank you because I know that you are walking. What do you are so know about yourself? A beginning of a process, a declaration of who you are. Who are you? Thank you, Marosha de Bacatala. You have been with the identity to land. This is how to combat a strong man. Because if you don't know, you cannot fight your enemy. We are enemies mightier than you. Eyes are over this farrow. How much do you know? How much do you know? For I know, for I know, I know. Thank you, because I know that the Lord is good and is a strong tower. The Lord God of the universe, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the universe, the Lord the universe, the you know that you are seated in every place in Christ Jesus, far above the I know he said he thought I think it was you. I he thought that there are peace and a lot of evil to give you a strength. Oh, where you are, I know. I know he has lifted us higher. The weight upon the Lord shall have the strength renewed. They will come what do you know? You claim your knowledge of what God has given unto you. Oh, do you know how many times oh, not of men but of God? Oh, the apostle will say, I am brought in into this grace, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. I labor more than them all, not because I have more skill, except for grace was given unto me. What do you know? Ah, what do you know? Do you know? Proclaim the knowledge of who you are in Christ. Oh, that now your eyes of understanding has been enlightened. If this is the only prayer we pray today, I can guarantee. I can guarantee that you can take up the enemy all alone by yourself. <laughs> take it all upon God and say, Father, I no longer look down upon my being. I no longer consider myself I have no ties and disadvantage and disappointed because of who I am, because of my family, because of where I came from, or because of my skin color. I now know that you have raised me as a beggar to sit with princes. I know that I am strategic and for victory and awesome wonders. I know I belong with certain care in the works of my heart. For I know, I know, I know, I know that my land, the land which you have given to me, it is for me and not for the enemy. Oh, I know, I know, I know, that I know, 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 I know,
I know that Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the law. Oh, Banana Shadda Bacapala Namatella, the coast of the Belenus Yandafana. I know that the law is a terrible I know that God will not forsake you. I know that the Lord surround me as He is around Jerusalem. So the Lord surround this soul. get His result. Know what we happen after tonight? I know that the Lord is your result also. I know that when they come like a cross, the name of the light is true. Your result cannot be given to you. Lord, you are dependent. It is not my power. You know that. It is not my might. You know that. That is by the spirit of God. I know I come to to I know I I know I know I know I know I know I know I I know I know I know I know I know I know I do you know it? Do you know? Do you know? And the Lord has promised us God will bring Satan under your feet shortly. Do you know? Is that God bless you? No. That no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and my righteousness of Him says the Lord of hosts Almighty. Do you know that? I know. I challenge your ignorance to that. I come against the strong man called spiritual ignorance in your life. I stand upon the authority of Numbers 22, 6 and 7. For I know that you, you are a great man. I know that you are a great woman. I know that you are destined for wonders and signs. I know, I know, I know, I know, and I charge you in the name of Jesus Come into your knowledge. Hatuta tasile tai na mawuka ihe basila tai. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall upon you and conduct a deliverance out of ignorance. You have so far in the camp of the enemy for too long because you refuse to know. Mimi, mimi, repent. Can you ask that a certain things God will not do for you? You got to do for yourself. Do you know that you can be strong and do exploit? The Bible says, and those that do know they are God. Look at you now. You don't know. That's why there is no strength. That's why you cannot do exploit. You see? Hey, pray, pray, pray. And those that do know, what do you know? Hey, begin to pray and say, Lord, I know. Lord, I know. I know. I have power over the enemy. I know your word is sure. I know great is he that lives within you and he that lives in the world. Begin to proclaim your knowledge. Those that do know their God, she shall be strong. And then we do exploit. Belak and Belam combination is not sufficient for those that do know. It's because the people of Israel do not know they jeopardize their victory and they end up in calamity. Did they know? 
that is why they abide by the oh matsaleto kaye de velusuru sutani malata mayine oh I speak to you my brother I speak to you my sister enter into the dynamics of knowledge I pull you out of the wardrobe of darkness and everything that hides you down in a place of obscurity come out I command the light of eternity to shine into your darkness right tonight encounter a mighty deliverer for I know you must know you need to know it is time to know the first miracle tonight this deliverance from the strong man called ignorance I believe you are still praying. Begin to proclaim what you know. Begin to challenge yourself. That as from tonight, you will walk in the revelation of the glory of God. As from tonight, the knowledge of Christ will come upon you. As from tonight, wisdom will be imparted unto you. And the Bible says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. You know, you know, you know, do you really know? It is time to pray. It is time to pray. This is the greatest miracle you can have. The world is dominion by knowledge. These things are the children's bread, but you are still struggling for it because for whatsoever reason. Hey, your knowledge has been subjected and ridiculed and transported, translated into ignorance. Awake, O oh thou that slumber. Awake out of your sleep, O oh slumbering Christian, and enter into your rest. Enter into victory, enter into dominion. No, this is a scavenger. You are not at the back foot burner. You are not at the back burner. You are to charge and shame the dynamic. You are not simply a conductor of evil. No, you will never play the orchestra of the enemy. What do you know? Rahman le sekadia. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? I know. I know the laws. Ah, do you know? Do you know? I know that you are blessed. Do you know that you are a daughter of Abraham? Do you know that none shall be barren in the land? Do you know that no sicknesses of the Jisha will come upon you because it's the God that He let you? Do you know? Do you know? No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Do you know He will give men for your life? Do you know that? That with long life it will satisfy you and show you your salvation. Do you know that? And you slept and had a dream and saw a coffee and you are the one inside. Oh, what do you know? Are you supposed to get up and challenge that coffee with the knowledge you have? Oh, you start on the task and say, Oh, come and pray for me, come and pray for me. My friend, you have to wake up. What do you know? For I know my redeemer live it. Do you know that? Job knew that in the face of his persecution. And the atrocity that came upon him. Do you know Job made that pronouncement? That thing is still your Bible tea today, except you've turned it off. He said, For I know my Redeemer live it. Do you know that? Ah, in the science. Are you provoking your spirit? Are you praying? Say, Lord, I know my Redeemer lives. <laughs> it doesn't matter the news I have just heard. I know my Redeemer lives. It doesn't matter what happens to the stock market. I know my Redeemer lives. It doesn't what hap- does not matter what happens in the government. I know my Redeemer lives. It doesn't matter what happens in the house of Haliamesh. It doesn't matter what happens in the Nipperostata. It doesn't matter what happens even in my local church, for I know my Redeemer lives. 
God is speaking to you tonight. If that is the only prayer we'll pray, we'll pray sufficiently and go. Because I know that if God releases you with knowledge, you will work as a ballistic missile against the enemy. You will be a threat to your tormentors. Yes. Because the enemy must take their flight simply because now you know. Marusa deka baluta nekurama nekedeya for I know Oh, Marie de Malibes. What do you know? Do you know that you are a winner of souls? Do you know that? Do you know that nothing can be irresistible unto you? Do you know that? Are you busy fraternizing and begging and trying to bootnik men and playing circumfancy games so that men can lift you up? Do you know that promotion does not come from the east or from the west that God is the judge? Do you know that? <laughs> Are you trying to break, beg men for, for promotion? Have you signed documents with men or oh, for all kinds of negotiations so that you can be elevated? Why? Do you know who you are? Oh, I know. I know. Yes, I know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh Lord, yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> oh Lord, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Arima Sunda Imagawola Dayenda Yes. Oh Lord, yes, I know. Imarule Takayo. Aranda nena ibeno le agaye kerua la basi na lenda hawa yes oh Lord yes I know eh ami na wazu zoba ina alayero to gaga galidi ere mada yes mane yes I know ivaru alita yo zanza gai gonda liare gai na wakonga dada melezeri ya yes. Mira, yes, I know, I know. Anumara so vakali adayena, atada yele siki aramonda, yes. Ah, yes, I know. Mina le hayo, atade kadibali wara hiade, andaida sasa kale vaya, yes. Manine, yes, I know. Jioba, I've given you vigor. Glory on the cross, my friend. Wake up and walk it out. Yes, <laughs> Malinia. Yes, I know. Aruba Sele. For this reason, I shed my blood. I gave myself for you, oh Lord. Aria. Yes, I know. I know. Amesika Valia Seka. That you may walk in glory now. Yes, hey. oh Lord, yes I know. Ina na me hania suzuma ga ekaliza iri aya. Nani ne na la suzuma da ya? Yes, yes I know. Rakele, it's no need to fear anymore because I am always with you. Yes, <laughs> Marua, yes I know. Mani ni ale way why? Wipe away your tears, my friend. Wipe away your tears, my friend. Lord, he's speaking to you now. Oh, you've got nothing to worry about. He's ever present, happy trouble. Yes, mani mola. Yes, I know. Irepata kuma azaza la tai ani ne na ile ataku kaiza. Naina Babalu, yes. Arua, yes, I know. 
Yes, I know. Rivalete. Redemption has been planned for you. Wipe away your tears today now. Oh Lord, yes, I know. I know. You are redeemed from your enemies. Now walk in victory. Yes, Lord, yes, I know. Your guide, your danger, beyond the face of the Father. Oh, yes, yes, I know, I know. No, hell, your head, we fall down without the Father's awareness. Ah, Martina, yes, I know. He counted every hair on your head. He's so concerned about you fear not don't be discouraged he will make a way for you just trust my name yes I know oh yes oh yes do you know do you know Oh, akanka ka wa ka luruza dia no me na ile dia se ada yeah yes we know friends let's begin to worship god we are going to close today just like this just with the reality that we know we will continue in the weeks i want you go and start singing and worshiping god that now i know my redeemer lives now i know who i am in christ because that is the beginning of your victory and you test this thing and you will see it works and you will have testimony to it we have been barraging heaven with certain requests that heaven does not recognize because we have not known who we are supposed to be it didn't take one year for Peter to raise Dockers from the dead I don't understand where our Christianity is coming from Ah, we need to know Zivarus Katinezelesudagas Begin to praise God. Begin to worship. Begin to give Him time. Magnify Him. Magnify Him. Magnify Him. Magnify Him and exalt Him.